Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today we're just going to be doing a tutorial on how to import Survivor animations and 3D models from Dead by Daylight and import them into Blender. So the, the product that we're going to be doing is we're just going to be making this outfit for Fang, and I'll just show you a quick preview of the final product. So as we can see, uh, we have the bag moving alongside Feng and the hair also moving alongside Feng. Now, I wanted to give full credit to this, uh, for this tutorial to Fruto as he showed me the entire process uh, in full detail. So thank you so much. Without, uh, without Fruto, uh, this tutorial would not have been possible. I also want to say uh, that there is a link to the Discord um, for Dead by Daylight rendering. Uh, so please check out that Discord link in the description below. If you have any questions whatsoever, please come and join this Discord and ask any questions that you have here and we will be able to uh, help you out from there. So onto the tutorial. So the first thing that you need is software prerequisites for this entire process. So first one is Umodel. Just type Umodel into Google, click on the first link and then just click on download and download the Windows 32 version or the Linux version, depending upon your operating system. Okay, so I've downloaded it uh, right here. And from here, if you have WinRAR, just right click on this file and click extract here. You can also, um, if you have the default Windows things, you should be able to just click on extract files, like right click and extract files and it should also extract these files here. And then from there you're done. The second thing you need is BefZZ's importer. So just type that into Google, click on the first link, and then you wanna scroll down until you go uh, see the current branch latest. And the 280 direct link is what you want. Uh, two, 280 just stands for Blender 2.8, but it, I can confirm it does work for the latest version, Blender 2.91 as of recording. So right click on this link here and then click save link as and then just save it anywhere and then just click yes because I've already uh, downloaded it. Okay so then you just need to open any random blender file. I'll open another random blender file. Um, click on general, edit preferences. It doesn't really matter uh, what the blender file is but just click on install and you want to go to your downloads folder and just uh, install this thing here. So just click on install add-on. Okay, so I'm not gonna do it because I have already done it. From here, you just wanted to double check and just search up PSK here in the search and just make sure it is enabled here. So make sure this checkbox is ticked. And from there, you are done for the prerequisites. So I'll just close this other Blender file. Okay, so that's all the prerequisites. Um, but you also need to know where your game files are stored. So I haven't actually got, uh, Dead by Daylight installed, but if you do, uh, pretty much just click on this browse icon, click on manage, browse local files. And what you will see is, you will see something like this, but not exactly. So you will see something like this, and then you'll go to the Dead by Daylight and you'll see this content folder, and that's where your content will be stored. So you can just copy this path uh, just for the next step. So just click up here, select everything, control C, copy it. Okay, and then just remember this path. But I do suggest that you copy this folder itself to your disk. Um, if you have the space, it is 40 gigabytes. But the reason why is because uh, behavior in future might decide to encrypt the pack files, or they might change character models or animations. And in that case, it is good to have a backup on your computer. And that is what I have done. So basically, in my case, I'm just gonna show you what the pack file should look like. You should have a roughly around 39 plus uh, pack files here, and they should look like this. Okay, so from there, just open up a uh, U-model and just click on these three dots here. So this path here should be the path that uh, to your files, whether it's on Steam or wherever, so 
I, the path that I copied earlier, I just press Control V to paste it. And you can select that, uh, select that, press Enter and select that folder if you want. But I'm gonna keep it to where I stored my pack files, which is right next to new model in this new folder here. So I'm just gonna keep it here. You wanna check this box called override game detection, Unreal Engine 4, 4 and then Unreal Engine 4.25. Um, currently, as of recording, uh, for the latest patch 4.42, um, 4.4.2, it is Unreal Engine 4.25, but it could change in future. So just try out some of these other options if when you open the models, you get an error. Okay, but it's 4.25 for the latest one. You can also check the update notes under the Dead by Daylight wiki and just search Control F Unreal Engine and you'll see what version of Unreal Engine the current patch is using. Okay, press OK. Okay, so from here, we want the only files we're really interested in are the game folder, characters. So campers and slashes are the folders that we're interested in. Campers is where the, well, the survivors are stored, everything related to them. So their models, their animations, survivors, and slashes are pretty much just the killers. Everything, models, animations, all that, it's all stored under slashes. Uh, characters slashes. The only other folder that you might be interested in are uh, meshes environment. So this is where all the props, like some of the like uh, some of the like the asylum, the asylum, the 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 map props are stored. So you you will just look under here. They are stored under code names. However, I suggest you stay to characters mostly because uh, the props aren't placed. Uh, in the map, so you have to place them all manually and have to texture them all manually. And frankly, it's kind of a pain. So mostly I'd say stick to uh, characters. Okay, so basically um, because we're doing Feng, I'm gonna go straight to Feng. So I'm just gonna click on this left arrow, Feng. And I'm just gonna show you what this structure here is. So animation is where all the animations are stored. Um, materials you don't need to worry about, models, is pretty much uh, blueprint. You don't need to worry about either. Models is where all the 3D meshes are stored. This is very important. Uh, heads uh, is where the heads and the hair is stored. Legs, well, legs pretty much and their accessories. Torso is just the body, I guess. And yeah, textures, you don't really need to worry about uh, because it automatically exports. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to just export um, just the things that we want. So we want to right click on here and click on open folder content. And this will open everything here. Now you wanna press control G to just uh, disable that specular kind of thing, that, that uh, glare kind of thing, that light effect. I'm just gonna maximize this window. Then I'm gonna click on navigate and make sure include meshes is checked. This means that you'll only see meshes uh, uh, here. So you'll only see the 3D meshes, you won't see any materials or textures kind of things. Yeah, okay, cool. So this is the first thing that we want. So just from experience, I know that we need this mesh here. So I'm gonna press Control T, uh, it's right here as well, or Tag Mesh. So this will keep this mesh on the screen. Okay, so I'm gonna press the page down and page up uh, kind of keys to move up and down through the things that I want. I know that I want this hair mesh right here and so I don't want this black hair here. Uh, I don't want this here, so I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep pressing page down to uh, go through all the uh, objects. So I'm gonna press Control T here as well because I want this ponytail. And I'm gonna press page down again. So I don't want all this. I do want this though. I'm gonna press Control T again. And I don't want any of these. Page down, page down, page down. Okay, I don't want this either. Okay, so I do want, so I'm gonna, yep, so I do want this though. So I'm gonna press Control T to keep it on my screen. Okay, so I don't want any of these. I'm gonna keep going for a little bit. Okay, so uh, this, one second. I'm just trying to get the bag. Uh, I might, yeah, no, okay, I'll just export this much. So I'll go Tools, Export, Object, and Defaults are fine. I'm just going to go to my folder, Feng Tutorial. I'm gonna delete everything here first because, uh, but it's a clean folder here, okay? So 
So then we start off with a clean folder, and then I'm going to select this folder and I'm going to press OK. So export everything, and that's all good here. So I'm just going to press O, and I just want to uh, export one more thing from here, which is just the torsos accessories, because I know we want the bag. So I'm just going to open this one, and yep, everything looks fine. So I'm going to go Tools, Export Object, and I'm just going to put it to that same folder there and press OK. So that's all good, but I'm going to keep uh, UModel open because sometimes you just need to uh, export other things as well. Okay, so now comes the blender bit, uh, which is a little bit tricky, I must admit. I did record this about uh, four or five times now. So just click on the general and press, press A, X to delete everything. So A selects everything, X deletes everything. Okay, so from here, we just want to press the N key. And if you have enabled the BethZZ's add-on, you'll see this window here, PSK, PSA. Enable reorient bones, and that's all here. So uh, if your animation is not working properly, you may want to try checking the box reorient directly. But otherwise, if it is working fine, don't worry about it. Okay, so from here, uh, what we want to do is we just want to import everything in our Feng folder. So let me just delete this. So I'll, I'll go back. So I'll navigate to where my thing was. Here, so it's just uh, Feng tutorial, game, characters, campers, Feng. And I'll just make a bookmark here because I know that we're going to have to come here frequently. So I'm just going to go models. I'm going to go head. And I'm probably going to go, yes, this head here. So make, su make sure that it's just mesh is selected. So I'm just going to scroll in. So I'm just going to uh, scroll. Uh, uh, I'm going to use the middle mouse button plus the control key to scroll in and out. Um, okay, then use the shift and middle mouse button to pan. And just the middle mouse button itself rotates the camera, right? Okay, so that's the, all the navigation controls in Blender, if you, uh, just for a quick review. Okay, now we're just going to import some of the other stuff. So we're going to import the models, we're going to import the pigtails and the hair. This, uh, I will talk about this in a second, but there is a small error with that, and we're going to have to uh, change it slightly. But we're going to import the legs as well. We're going to import the uh, torso, and then we're going to import the bag. Yep, so everything is fine here. Now I just will select everything with just the A key, and I'm going to right click, shade smooth. So that everything doesn't seem very polygonal and it looks uh, more smooth and natural. Okay, so now that's done, what we want to do is we want to import the skeleton. And I did forget to export the skeleton, so I'm going to press the O key to go back into this window here so I can select just the skeleton. So the skeleton, the base skeleton, should usually be under the characters models folder. So as we can see here, it's in this uh, FMD skeleton ref. And I didn't mention, but this will probably be the hardest, um, hardest uh, skeleton, that, uh, the hardest model that you'll have to do, uh, so that you'll never have trouble with any model ever again in, in Dead by Daylight. So this is one of the most difficult ones because it's the older models and their skeleton, their skeletons aren't properly done. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna uh, just make this to just skeleton. We're gonna import just the skeleton here now because I just exported the skeleton with the default. So I'm going to go Feng models. And yeah, so this is all good here. So th this looks great. And we're just going to parent everything to this box by just, uh, so we're just going to left click here and just hold the control key and just control everything here, except for this hair here, because this hair is actually a problem here. Because how can we tell this is a problem? Because normally uh, with the newer models uh, in Dead by Daylight, the hair will be imported on top of the head. That is the first clue that there is something wrong and you'll have to go through my method instead of, or, or Futo's method, sorry, I should say, uh, but um, the method in this tutorial. And plus, there is no hair bones here. If you have a look at the skeleton here, there's no bones for the hair. So that's telling you that th there's something wrong with the hair. So we'll just delete the hair for now, actually, because I, I know that there's something wrong with the hair. So I'm just going to select everything with the holding the control key and just pressing uh, left mouse button. And yep, and then we're just going to select the skeleton last. 
right? And then press Control P uh, with empty groups. So this is just making sure that it, you're parenting it to the armature. And that is all good. The only thing that is the problem here is basically when we, to test this, we'll, we will uh, import an animation. So let's just export an animation here. So I will go to the animation folder, right click, export folder content and press OK. So this will export everything there. And I will just import an animation and I'll show you what are the issues. So the hair is one issue because it's not in the correct place and it, and it does not really animate at all because it didn't have any skeleton. But I'll also show you the other issue. So the other issue here is we, if we just play through this and I just zoom in a little bit by pressing left mouse button plus control key and just shift mouse, middle mouse button. Uh, we can see that the bag itself is not actually moving and it's actually kind of clipping through the body. So we need to fix that, but we will fix that a little bit later. So the hair is an issue and the other is uh, the, the bag is an issue. So that's the two things that we really need to fix and are the crux of this tutorial. So what we need to do here is we just need to import just the hair here. I'm going to set it to all here. And this is the method that you need to do if the hair is not imported directly onto the, whoops, sorry, I, I imported the head. But if it's not, if the hair is not imported directly onto the head, so you have to go through this process. Okay, so if it's like this, if it imports at the feet instead of the uh, head up here. So you just need to make it all and then just look at like, like this, right? Because if, it, if it's imports on top of the head, you can just uh, make it as part, you can uh, parent it as part of the base skeleton. But if not, for the older models especially, like Fang, um, you will have to go through this method. Okay, so first things first, we just need to delete this hair skeleton here. The reason why is because if we just look right here, um, this skeleton, if I just go to edit mode, and I just uh, navigate back around here. This skeleton only has one bone here and we don't really need it. It's not useful for our purposes uh, because this hair, if we look at weight paint mode, if I just select the skeleton, the mesh itself, and I go to uh, back to object mode and then I go to weight paint, uh, one second. If I just select the uh, mesh itself and I go to weight paint, you can see that this one, one bone here that was previously selected is in charge of this, of moving this entire, um, this entire mesh. But what we really want is, we want it to be uh, this root bone from this pigtails to move the entire mesh. So I'll show you what I mean by that, by just going to pose mode. And I'm just going to move just this root bone here. So as we can see, when I rotate this, it moves just the pigtails, but what we want it to do is we want to move the entire uh, hair, right? When we rotate just this bone. So instead what I'll do is I'll delete this skeleton here. And if you just delete a skeleton, even though it has a mesh parented to it, the mesh will not be deleted. So that's why this mesh is still here. Now I'm just going to select, I'm gonna go back to object mode. I'm gonna select this uh, hair mesh and I'm gonna select this other mesh here with uh, by holding the shift key. And now I'm just gonna press control J to combine these into one mesh here. Okay, cool. So now if we just look at weight paint mode again, we're just gonna look at the vertexes for this, um, vertex groups for this mesh. Basically, uh, the thing is currently, how do vertex groups work first? Quick refresher, uh, a vertex group so basically, you need to have the same name for a bone and a vertex group. So a bone, when you def when you move the bone, it will change, it will affect only the vertex group with the same name, pretty much. And the weight, this color here, is basically the degree to which it affects it. Red means one, and if it has a weight of one, it affects it completely, and it takes on the full transformations of the bone. Uh, if it is less than one, so zero is, it has no effect. And everything else in between, like the green area here you see, is like 50% uh, or in between, pretty much. So 
because we deleted that bone, which was named joint char with a capital C, we deleted it. This, this, there is no bone which has the same name of this. So basically it's useless to us. And what we want to do is we want to combine the joint, this red weight paint with the joint char here with lowercase. We want this joint char vertex group to have that weight paint here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to object mode. We're going to go press tab to go to edit mode. I'm going to click on anywhere on the screen to deselect everything. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh, vertex group here. So this selects all vertices which are part of this vertex group. And I'm going to select the joint char, which is the lowercase c, and I'm going to click on assign. Now, if we just take, uh, if we just click off this and just go to object mode, and now we go to weight paint mode, you'll see what's happened. So we've selected all the vertices that were part of that, and we've made them all red because we made sure that that was a weight paint of, that was a weight of one. Now this other group right here, this vertex group, we don't need it. We can press this minus button to delete it. And now we have this here. So if we just check what this just did, let's go to, uh, let's go to the, click on the skeleton or the armature, click on pose mode, and now let's just click on this bone here and let's rotate it. As we can see, this uh, bone is now rotating both the pigtails and the hair as well, which is what we want. I'm gonna press Control Z to go back. Okay, and undo. Okay, so now the next step we need to do is we need to actually uh, press on this um, mesh here, press Alt-P to clear the parent. Um, actually, I'll show, you, I'll show you what happens if you don't clear parent, okay? So I'm just going to, I'm going to move it in place first. So I'm going to press numpad, uh, numpad 1 to take on the front view. I'm going to uh, use Control plus middle mouse button to zoom out a little bit, Shift plus middle mouse button to pan again. And now I'm going to click on this armature here and I'm going to move it upwards um, until it's roughly here. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to just zoom in a little bit more. Just make sure this is parented a little bit better. I could just use G by using, I'm using G to move um, the thing as well. I should mention. Now I'm going to go to uh, the next view. I'm going to press numpad three to go to side view. I'm going to press Z to go to wireframe and click on wireframe and just to make it more exact. I'm going to use shift um, middle mouse button to pan and now let's just make sure this armature is more exact. And okay, so I'll just show you what the error is with this case. So I'm just gonna go back to one, I'm gonna press Z, I'm gonna go to back to solid view, solid view. Okay, cool. So now the problem here is when we, when we uh, select both of these skeletons by pressing control, le left mouse button, control J, I'll show you what happens. So as you can see, this hair actually just goes down here. And this is kind of a problem. Um, so instead of doing this entire process, we're going to unparent it first. So before moving it, what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, unparent this mesh here. So by selecting the mesh first, and then press Alt P to unparent it. This is so that we can avoid that problem, which I just showed you before, when you combine the two skeletons. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing by just going press numpad one, and then just, um, let me just check if I'm recording. Yeah, cool. And let's just uh, shift pan, shift middle mouse button. I'm gonna press G Z to move it right up. Um, one second. That's looking fine. Now I'll just go to the side view just to make it more exact. I'll just zoom in a little bit more, shift pan, and I'll go Z and I'll go wireframe just to make sure everything's fine. And I'll just move it so then it's more exact on the head. Okay, so I'm trying to get it as close as possible really. And that looks okay. I'm going to go to front view. I'm gonna go press Z. I'm gonna go to solid view. And we're just gonna have a look around the hair is clipping through slightly, so I'm going to move it just a smidge backwards by using G X. I'll press G X, so it should be G Y. Let's move it just back a little bit. So you can see, I'm just gonna make it clip and then I'm gonna make it not clip there. And let's just look at it from the front. That's looking okay. 
maybe moving it a little bit down. No, but I think that should be fine. Okay, cool. We're just gonna call it fine, but you can make a little bit more adju uh, fine adjustments, just make sure uh, it looks okay. But currently, to, me, to my eye, it looks fine. And we're, we're good. Okay, so from here, we're going to just select uh, this, this armature first, then we're gonna control uh, left mouse button, select the other one. Okay, so we're gonna to go to the object properties. So what we're trying to do here, if we just look at the item, is we've made these transforms and we're gonna copy these transforms onto the skeleton here so that it moves into the same place basically. So we're just going to se select the skeleton first and control, this, uh, control left mouse button to select this, go to the object, data man, uh, object thing and just pr right click on one of these and just say copy all to selected. And as we can see, we moved the skeleton uh, by the same amount by copying all the transforms right there. Okay, so now from here, what we can do is now we can combine the two skeletons by control left mouse button again to select multiple things and press control J. Now, as we can see, it's all combined together. And what we wanna do from here is we want to just um, press this one, uh, left mouse button on this one, control left mouse button on this one to select multiple, and then press control P while your mouse is in the middle of um, here. Now, uh, say with empty groups, so you're just parenting this armature, uh, this mesh to the armature with empty groups. Now what we can see is when we move this armature, the hair mesh moves alongside it. So let's just test this out with some animation here. Okay. So we're just gonna play through, and as we can see, it's not working because the reason why it's not working is because the hair root bone is not parented to the uh, head root bone. So we're just gonna have to fix that. So I'm just gonna press Control Z, so then I go back to the normal thing, and I'm just going to uh, go to edit mode. So I will just select the skeleton first, press Tab to go to edit mode, uh, click on anywhere to deselect everything, I'm just gonna to go to the skeleton, I'm gonna to go to viewport display, octahedral, just so then it's easier to see, and I'm gonna turn off group colors. Okay, so from here, basically, uh, we need to select uh, this this hair, oh wait, whoops, I forgot one thing. Sorry, before, before I could do this, actually, um, before I do this, so just before you can combine the two skeletons, basically, you want to go to uh, select the skeleton first, press tab, and then press A to select all the bones here, and press M. So this is just moving it to another bone layer so that you can uh, see it more clearly. So th these bones will be on a separate layer. Okay, so now, now you can do the combined thing. So just go back to edit mode, uh, control, select that one, control J, and then now just control P, uh, control P these, empty groups. Okay, cool. So now, basically, what we wanna do is shift, uh, left click these to, to view both uh, bone layers. So this is just makes it much cleaner because the hair bones will be on a separate layer. So if you wanna animate them in future, it will be much easier for you. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go back to view, uh, viewport display, octahedral, turn off group colors. Okay, so from here, I'm just gonna to go to edit mode once I've selected the skeleton. I'm gonna select this bone here. So because I know that this bone here is the root bone for the hair, and I'm going to select this one right here. Can you see that all the lines are pointing towards this head bone right here? So you can look at um, just the side, you'll see that currently the selected one or the name will be on the top left-hand corner. So if I select, for example, this one, it says joint head 01, and actually that is the one, but one second, I'll, I will, yeah, I will select them again. Um, so I'll, I will just select, so this one's joint lip, lip upper 01, so I know I'm not selecting that one. So I'm just going to reselect them again until I select the right one. Uh, yes, joint head 01. I'm just trying to, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to make sure I'm selecting the right one. Oh my gosh, wait, one second. Uh, shift, I'm holding the shift key. I'm just gonna get this one, yeah, okay. So you can just select the end, I think, but 
you can press Control P from here and just say keep offset. So if you press uh, connect it, it will actually move the bones. In fact, I will just show you why not. Control P, if I just go connected, it will move the bones there. And that's not what we want. We want the we want we want it to be kept. We don't want it to be like connected like that. And as we can see here, that should be fine. So now we're just going to connect it all like that. And I'm just going to go back to object mode. I'm going to select the skeleton first and then import a PSA manual idle. Yep. Okay. So now as we can see, everything's fine. We just look at how does it look? So, yep. As we can see, the hair is moving alongside fine with the, the mesh. The hair is not clipping into the head or anything. And that's really good. So just make sure that you're connected to joint head 01, right? Because otherwise it may not work properly. Now, the only problem we're still having is this bag right here um, is actually not moving alongside everything. So we're just gonna fix that. So it should be moving alongside the back. So to fix this, basically, we just needed to import the skeleton of the bag. So let's go back to Feng and let's go to models. Uh, torsos, accessories, and let's just check this one, which is skeleton, only importing the skeleton, right? So this is fine here. Uh, actually, let me just change it to octahedral and turn off group colors for this one, but let's just move it to the left a little bit. Basically, we can see that it has some duplicate bones and we don't want duplicate bones uh, because if a model has duplicate bones, uh, it just, it should, just shouldn't have duplicate bones because they won't have any effect and yeah. So I'm gonna go to edit mode with tab key and I'm just gonna delete this bo these bones here which I know are duplicates. Uh, I'm gonna delete them all. So I'm gonna delete this bone, this bone. So these are all the spine bones, right? So I'm just gonna delete them. I'm gonna leave everything else. Okay, so all these bones are just for the bag. I'm gonna go back to object mode and I'm gonna press Alt G and Alt, R, and uh, yeah, so I think that should be fine. That's just to reset the um, transforms of the um, object. Yeah, so as we can see here, we've got this, this bone here, it should look like this, and it aligns perfectly to the head and all, and the bag and the straps of the bag. So that's good. We know that it's in the correct place. So let's just test it one more time. Well, um, Oh, sure. There is still a problem here, but we'll, we'll, we'll click on, oh yeah, sorry, sorry. We need to, we need to uh, press, select this one, select these two, and then uh, press control J to fuse the skeletons, and it should be FMD skeleton ref. Okay, now let's just import this animation here, but there is still one more issue. So let's have a look. So it isn't actually, it still isn't moving. The reason why is because we forgot to parent it. We forgot to parent the, the, the root bone of the bag to uh, the root bone of the, the uh, Feng Min model. So let's just do that one last step and we're basically done. Then we just need a texture. Texturing takes ages though. <laughs> but yeah, okay, so uh, let's just go to select this, go press tab go to go to edit mode. And what we want to do is we just want to parent this uh, bone here we want to parent it to probably this bone right here, basically. So this, this, um, this, uh, the, the part of the uh, spine, I guess. So let's press Control P and let's press Keep Offset. So you'll have to kind of do a little bit of trial and error. You might also want to try uh, parenting it to any of these other ones and see if it still works, but I think it works uh, not as well. But anyway, let's try this out. So by just checking it with the animation, by importing an animation to it, and we'll see how it works. So we'll just shift spacebar just to play through the animation. And as we can see, it looks fairly natural with the uh, character uh, breathing in and out and the bag moving with it, which is absolutely great. Uh, we can also try some other animations like the, uh, the sit on log, I guess. And let's just play through it. And yes, it looks very natural, no clipping, the hairs looks fine. I should also um, mention that this one should be right click shade smooth. Um, and yeah, but otherwise, yeah, that's all fine. But let me just control Z that actually, all that. Um, so then I can 
just uh, have no animation because I just find it a little bit annoying. And let me just right click Shades Move again and I'll save this. Yeah, you should be saving this a little bit earlier, but basically, uh, so I'll just call this Feng Tutorial Blend, uh, Feng Tutorial. Okay, cool. And we're, we're on the verge of being done now. So basically now the only thing we need to do is uh, materials. So materials are actually fairly simple, but very tedious. So I will just uh, take away that, the view for that uh, skeleton because it's kind of annoying. And let's go to materials now. So we want to just select the meshes here. So let's select the first one. Okay, this one here. So now what we need to do is we want to click use nodes and we want to go to the shading tab. I'll just reorganize this shading tab a little bit by closing this, like clicking, clicking on the, and dragging on the left hand corner just to delete it. So because we only need, uh, yeah, so sometimes you will accidentally create a, a um, another window. So don't worry, that's, that always happens to me as well. So yep, just scroll out to zoom and everything. And now what we want to do is we want to connect all the nodes here. So basically the node kind of thing, it just, the thing that you want to note is, I'll just find it, the node setup is you want to just look at this most complex node setup and set up everything from there. So this is the model node setup, which is the most complex one that will ever occur. So now I'll just click Shift A and I'll search for image textures just to, so I'm just going to replicate this setup exactly. So I'm just going to get some image texture nodes by Shift A, adding new nodes, and I'm gonna add a load of image texture nodes. And once you've done one node, you can, you can copy it over to other ones. Um, but for now, we're just going to do this. It's gonna take a bit though. So this is probably the most annoying part of the process because it's just so long. Um, but let's try it out now. So let's go to Feng and let's go to uh, Textures this time. And now in this case, wait, where are we? Yeah, yeah, okay, all good, all good. So we're looking for hair in this case, right? So in this case, it should probably be part of this one. So a quick clue. So how do we know which files we should be using for the image textures? So we know because, uh, let me just bookmark this textures folder right here. Oh wait, what's not game textures? <laughs> I meant, um, let's go back to Feng, models. Uh, wait, no. Wait, Feng, textures, yeah, sorry. I'll just bookmark this. And then if you just look at this, this, this material that you're trying to make something for, you need to basically use um, the, the thing with the same name. So I know it's, it should be under probably outfit 002, or you can have a look at it under other outfits. Just look for the hair. So it has the same name. That's why I know that it must be this one. So I'm gonna use this one. So I have a base color, I have a M and I have an N. So I did say that this is the most complex one. So if you don't have these associated files, you wanna delete the, the nodes which aren't here basically. But anyway, so I'll, I'll just show you on the, along the way. So we have this BC one. So if we just look here, BC connects to B, is, uh, connects to base color because BC stands for base color. Okay, so the ne next one, we have an M node, right? So this is basically a, um, let's go to textures, 002. M stands for, like it, it's basically your alpha map. So we just wanna connect it straight to alpha. There's not really much else if we just follow this, yep. Yeah. And just make sure that the specular is 0.1. Well, these are the best settings that I found. Um, and clear coat roughness 0 0.03 is fine. IOR 1.45, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, emission strength, let's change that to five as well. That's just for emissions, if you have anything complex. In this case, we won't, but um, I'd like to set it anyway. Cool, um, let's have a look at the folder again, that, that 002 folder for this material. And we just have one more, which is an end node. So I'm just gonna delete this final image texture node. And I'm just going to, Doing this this way, I want to grab a shift A, uh, separate uh, RGB node. Yep. And I'm going to go invert, look for an invert node. And I'm just going to invert the green channel. So the end 
file stands here for, stands for a normal map. So this is just showing like the the light, like uh, how light should be. Uh, one second, sorry, I'll, I'll just explain it one second. So it explains like how light should behave when it hits the model, basically, and it's for high resolution uh, textures. Uh, sorry, high resolution sculpts. Uh, they, that's why they use it. Anyway, so I'm just going to put this into here, and yep, I'm going to put it back in here. So why am I why am I inverting just the green channel? So basically, this is just out of experience uh, because Fruto uh, said that basically he he found that if you invert the green channel, it looks better. Uh, it's just a little quirk, um, and we're just going to connect it to a normal map, and we're just going to connect it to color, and connect the normal map to the normal. Let me just move everything to the right a little bit by dragging it, and there we go. Okay, so now let's go to the Layout uh, tab, and we'll just go to the Material Preview. So there's one problem with this. You can have a look at the, there is actually a little bit of like, well, there usually usually be some black spots. As you can see, there's black spots in between here. So basically what we want to do here is we want to change, we go down our Materials tab, we want to change this Blend Mode, to alpha hashed or alpha clip. In this case, alpha clip's better for hair. And basically, we want to turn the tolerance of the clip threshold uh, probably around like here-ish. Uh, it's until we just start seeing that black stuff disappearing, right? Because this is how they do it uh, in game. Um, so I just want to maybe turn it up a little bit. I think I don't really need it much in this one. As long as the black is gone, I will be happy. Yep, so that looks okay. Um, yeah, so that's fine. So it's either alpha hit, hashed or alpha, alpha clip, and just try one of those settings, and they will probably work out. Okay, cool. The reason why we need this is because we have an M node in the shading tab. So this tells us that we need to do that setting of the alpha clip. And make sure that if you don't see this setting, just make sure that you're on render engine EV. Even if you're on cycles, set it to EV first, then do the alpha clip kind of thing. Then you can set it back to cycles. Um, it's just a weird quirk. I don't know why, um, but yeah. Okay, so now let's do, so we see here that the, the material is done. So we'll click on the next mesh and I'll speed up uh, my process right here. So basically remember that we need to click here and we need to click the use nodes button. You need to click the use nodes button. If you're having an error, make sure that the Use Nodes button is clicked. Okay, now I'll speed through this one um, a little bit faster because I've done this one now. So you can basically just go back to the shading, click on this material uh, shading, and I'm just going to press A to select everything, Control C to copy everything. And then I'm going to go to my head, and I'm going to go Layout, uh, it's Shading tab again. My custom shading tab. I'm going to delete everything here. Press Control V. Okay, so now we're just going to change uh, the textures here. So basically, I know that it should be under Outfit 00 because this is default head. And if I just look at the name again, checking the name against it. So BC. So I have a BC. Do I have an M here uh, for the Outfit 00? Do I have an M? No, I do not. So for this one, I just have BC, N, and ORM. So I'm just going to delete all the related nodes for M, and I have an N, so I have to change it to this one, so I'm gonna change it to the head. And the other one I want is an ORM. And if I just look at my, my model one, so if I look at where should my ORM be, my ORM should be here. So ORM stands for uh, Ambient Occlusion, uh, Roughness and Metallic. Yep, okay, let me just go down to textures again, outfit 00, ORM. Yep, okay, so I'm gonna add a separate RGB node. So the reason why is ORM, uh, it separates the, the ambient occlusion in the red channel, the roughness in the green channel, and the M, so which is the metallic, in the blue channel. That's why we use a separate RGB node. So we just want to put this green channel into roughness, as we know beforehand. So roughness is, where is it? Here, 
and we want to put this blue channel into metallic. And that's it. So the ambient occlusion isn't actually used because we don't need it. Um, uh, yeah, so at least I, from the research I did, uh, basically Blender doesn't need this ambient occlusion, creates ambient occlusion itself and is not very useful. It's only useful for Unreal Engine itself. Okay, cool. Now that's done here, I'm just gonna copy this one because it's a little bit more complex. And let's just double check in the layout tab. Material looks fine, yep. Yeah. Looks all fine. If it looks funny, you've probably made a mistake. So let's look at the materials. All the materials are done there. Let's just look, look for the next one then. Accessory and all that. So let's go back to the shading tab. Press use nodes. Delete everything here. Control V. Okay, now let's have a look for this accessory 010. So this is probably under a different outfit because the 00 is the default outfit. And I know this is for the bag and all the, the, um, the traditional clothing. So it should be under something else. So probably outfit 00. Nine, and this is why it helps to be to have a new folder to export everything to a new folder and not everything because you know everything here is related to the Feng model. Okay, so accessory 010, so let's just replace that one. It's just a base text, base color. Um, it also has 09010. Okay, it also has okay, so it also has O. Accessory, so it has a normal map, it has an ORM. It says ORM and normal map, okay. So we're just gonna slot everything into where it should be. So it also has an N. So it's just a process of looking through everything and making sure you're very, you're very, um, you're very on point, as in like you're not making any mistakes, just make sure that everything's fine. So I've got these three, okay, cool, that's done. And let's just check it out. And yeah, so that part's done. Now the next part, material here, let's keep going. Speed things up, draw V. Okay, so we're looking for FM torso here. So let us go back to outfit 010. I might just add a bookmark of it for this. Okay, so FM, so I'm looking for a torso here. Base color, yep. And we have a, N and we have an ORM. So ORM and we have an N here. Okay. Um, wait, what? Oops, 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 oops. Let me just make sure I'm in the right one folder. So just make sure that everything starts with torso, right? Because we're, we're doing all these files related to torso. And just have a look at the folder. Make sure which files. We only have these three files related to the FM torso. That's how you know which nodes to put down. Okay, that looks fine. I will just double check it in the layout tab. Yep, looks good. Okay, so let's go with the next material down on the list. Uh, shading, press the use nodes, remember. Delete everything here, control V, and let's have a look for the next ones. FM torso 00 in this case. FM torso or 00. I feel like it should be under here then. Because if it's, it starts with OO, and let's go with BC, N, and so we have BC, N, and RM. So BC, RM, and N. And let's just check that out, make sure it all looks okay. So let's, let's stop using nodes. And as we can see, yeah, so it's just using the fingers there. If you press the use nodes, it shows you uh, what the, the material should look like. And make sure you're in the material preview uh, shading uh, tab. Okay, cool. So now let's do the final one. So as we can see, all these materials are done because they're not white. Um, then this final one, FM legs 01. Easy, easy, easy. Let's go back to the shading. Press use nodes. Delete everything here. Press control V. And let's keep going. Let's keep this going. Yep. So let's have a look. Let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Um, oh God, my microphone is over there. But okay, all good. Okay. Let's look under outfit 02, sorry, it should be outfit 01, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look here. Let's have a look, it is here. Um, yeah, base color. We've got a, a outfit, oh gosh. Yeah, we've got an ORM and we've got an N here. 
put an N. Okay. And we should be all good because we've got just these three. I'll just double check one more time. Yep. And the final thing we need to do is just this bag right here. So let's just make sure that this FM here is done as well. So let's just control use nodes and then delete everything. Control V and let's just add this final stuff. Should be under outfit 010, right? So this is hair accessory. Yep, so it has hair accessory because if we just look at the name, just remember, look at the name. Um, hair accessory, base color. Uh huh. Hair accessory, base color. Is there anything else? Can't quite see anything else. It might not actually have another file here. I think that's actually, that might actually, that might actually be it. So in that case, if it only has one, we're just gonna delete this. And we're just gonna make sure that's all right. It's a little bit shiny to be honest. Uh, but then again, that looks a little bit weird. I might be making a mistake here. Um, let me just make sure. Hair 09. So G, so don't worry about G files. Um, yeah, okay, we're just gonna call this okay for here. I might be making a, a small mistake on this, um, but yeah, that's all good here. Now, from here, what we want to do is we just want to add some lights into our scene and just animate everything. So, as we can see here, if we just add in our bones again and just select this skeleton, import the PSA menu idle, and then just, uh, hide them again. So let's have a look here. So as we can see, um, the, the character is animating properly and we have a preview with all the materials. But now we just want to do a quick render of it and we'll call this tutorial done because it is very, very long. But essentially most of it was actually just the, mat the materials. Um, okay, so let's just control Z that just to get rid of the animation because I kind of don't like it. And uh, let's add some lights into our scene and let's uh, do that. So shift A to add some lights and make sure in your object mode, shift A, uh, light, point. I'm going to go G and bring it to maybe this side. Um, I'm going to actually use two tabs here. So one for the, one for the preview, like head on preview. So this will be my head on preview scene. I'm going to use non-pad one. And I'm just going to have a look at her from this angle here. I'm gonna go one, and then I'm just gonna make this light, select this light, turn up its power quite a lot. So uh, Blender Guru has a fantastic series on how to light your models correctly. Uh, basically, don't fear shadow. Shadow is your friend, and you wanna be creating some shadow at all times. Um, actually, let me also add the animation back in because otherwise it looks a little bit awkward. Um, this one should be, yeah, so let me just add in the shadow here. Import, oh sorry, let me add in an animation so it doesn't look as awkward. Okay, and I'm just gonna move the light in this, this scene. I'm gonna move it this way a little bit. Okay, um, probably gonna decrease the power, power on this light just because it's very slightly overpowering. Okay, Okay. then I'm just gonna add in another light by going Shift D and duplicating it. I'm gonna bring it to the other, this, other, this other side. So, actually one second. I'm trying to get this light to work a little bit better. You can use Cycles or, or, or EV for this, um, but I just prefer EV because it's more real time. I'm gonna turn down this one a little bit. So now you can check the individual of effect of your lights. So this one's just a, I'm just using this as a fill light so that was my key light. I'm just using three-point standard, your standard three-point lighting here. So I'm just using G to move the things. Um, I'm gonna move it behind here. I'm gonna just move it here. Um, I'm just gonna light this one up a little bit more. Just gonna look 
kind of want to make some shadow on the right, actually. Uh, make make uh, so your your backlight should probably be it should be the brightest in this case. So I'm going to round this right up um, until I just see some light. So let's just check the individual effect of my lights. I think this light is just too bright, so I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. Or maybe move it move it further a little bit. It's a little bit shiny, but you can always adjust the specular in your materials if you think it's a little bit shiny. So you can just adjust the specular here. It, it makes it uh, less bright and more bright. Um, but you have to adjust that for each of your materials. But I'm just going to call it OK-ish okay here. Maybe light up her face a little bit more. Maybe just overhead a little bit more. Um, I can also adjust the softness of these lights by increasing the radius and stuff. But I'm not going to fiddle with it too much, just because this is a tutorial. And OK, so now the final thing that you want to do probably is let's just select this armature is create a render or an animation uh, with this kind of stuff. So let's just go back. OK, cool. So now that you've lit your, your um, character uh, to your satisfaction, um, I'm going to light it up a little more, but OK. OK, but anyway, now that you've lit, lit up your character to, to your satisfaction, you just want to, you can change the cycles or whatever. Um, you also want to check this box called transparent. This will make sure that your renders tra uh, render, render with a transparent background, which is always good. And basically, now we just want to render this, right? So from here, you can just create a camera. So I'll go Shift A, create a camera. Let's create a camera, camera, camera. I'll go G, bring this up, bring this back a little bit. Uh, okay, now I'll press zero, numpad zero to get camera to view. I'm going to change this um, camera to camera to view. I'm going to use this box, so then I can just uh, get the area that I want. Um, I'm just going to rotate the camera a little bit, maybe like this. Uh, let me just uh, turn off that armature so then I can see properly. I'm going to change the... So you can change the render uh, settings here, like the samples, which will make it a little bit better. And I'm also going to change... Uh, let's have a look. I want to change just the render settings by the... Yes, so I'm going to change this. So I'm probably going to... So this is how you can render it like 4K or whatever. You can just change this to 3840. But since I want a more uh, narrow aspect ratio, I will just use this. And I'll just render this this much like this. Okay, and from here you can just render it by just going render uh, render image. Um, but I will, just add I, I will just add one more step, which is just to talk about the... Uh, dope sheet. I oh, know. Sorry, the timeline. I oh, know, not the not the timeline. Where is it? The nonlinear animation window. Okay, so this nonlinear animation window is probably the most useful thing that you'll need. So I'll just select the armature here, and I will just. Okay, one second. I will select this here. Okay, then I'll push down this menu idle. For example, if I want two animations to occur um, in here, what I will do is I will just go to another window first. Let's go to my animation window. I'm going to set my end frame to maybe 5,000-ish. I don't know, 3,000. Just then I have some extra space. And what I'm going to do, so you, you just push down. You press the push down thing to make this a new track. Okay. I'm going to just shift to zero if I just can stop. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, and now from here, what I'll do is I'll add in some more, like two animations. So if I wanted two animations in a row, I will just input this eyes closed thing. That's probably kind of a crap animation, uh, but let's try another one. Okay, this one, sure. And I want, so I want them to occur one after the other. So I'll just drag this one here. And if I want them to blend a little bit, I will just press the N key here, and I will click on this. I'll go to the Strip tab, and I'll add in a blend of maybe 30 frames. And you'll see that triangle line there, so maybe I'll go 10 frames then. 10 frames seems about right. 
and blend out 10 frames so that these both blend together. So it looks a little bit better and let's just have a look how this looks now. Um, but yeah, so it'll just look like something like this. Yep, so it just blends to the animations together if they don't fit together. You don't need to blend them like this, but um, if they don't like fit together nicely, this blend uh, helps out. And this is how you have multiple animations in a row and you make it look really nice. Okay, so from there, I'll just teach you how to render. Basically, just go render, render image, or render animation. So I'm just gonna render image for this case, but you can render animation as well. Uh, if you render animation, just make sure you, you set the right uh, start and end frames. But yes, as we can see, we have rendered Feng in uh, full quality. Uh, you can render at higher settings or write higher sample sizes or resolutions, but that is pretty much it. Uh, thank you for listening to this tutorial and, and um, I hope this did help out, especially with the older and more complex uh, Survivor animations. And thank you so much to Fruto uh, for your brilliant help. And thank you for being here. Uh, you are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.